So Alfred de Musset is, um, um, in a way, a very um, rebellious figure, right? We like to think of him as, as somebody, somebody that is criticizing everything, right? At the beginning of the Confession, if you read that, you'll see that um, there's kind of a little bit of a, a, a lib I mean, the libertine tone that we had in, in said is being uh, recycled in Musset, right? Uh, the erotic, the carnal is, is, is still there, right? When Musset write, uh, writes the Confession uh, d'un enfant du siècle, we are in a time period where the youth, which he proposes to be a representative of uh, in, in, this, in this book, um, is extremely disappointed, right? They are, uh, in his word, the fruit of disappointment, uh, basically, um, because the revolution hasn't led to anything but an empire, an empire that fell apart and that led to the restoration of the monarchy. So we're back to where we were before, um, back in, in 1789, with the restoration of the, uh, the, the French um, monarchy, right? So with the re restoration of the monarchy comes obviously the restoration of the Catholic religion. And, um, as I was mentioning before in, in the previous video about Chateaubriand, um, not everybody is against a, t a total erasure of Catholicism, a total elimination of religious practices. Um, people advocate for a rational Christianity and non-supernatural uh, Christianity, but of course, coming back to a, um, to a monarchy, uh, which is an episode that we don't like to think about, in, in French history, right? We like to think that our revolution was a once and for all experience of, you know, they all uh, lived happily ever after and it wasn't really the case. And Musset is, 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 is here to remind us that no, I mean, um, after Napoleon and the return of, of the Bourbons on the French throne, uh, people are very lost, especially the young people, right? Like him, um, wondering what's best. And that's a little bit, you know, what's at the essence of romanticism. Uh, obviously, a radical enlightenment, a atheist uh, vision of society um, is not taking, is not, you know, going anywhere. It failed. It was a, it was a, a failure um, in France. But the other, you know, the flip side is going back to to the monarchy, to Catholicism, isn't. Uh, an option either after this experience of the revolution. So the romantics are looking for ways to to reconcile but in in Musée though it's not as clear as in it's not a project like what you'd have in, in Chateaubriand it's more of a conflict right a dilemma. If you look at the protagonist of the Confession uh, Octave, Octave is always torn between two things right um, so he goes in and adopts the libertine lifestyle but then he goes too far then he returns, you know, to isolation and gets to the Bible, right? So this kind of, you know, constant dilemma between the two paradigms, right? He's having a, um, a hard time reconciling, right? And that's all due to the negative experience of the revolution, um, the negative experience of the empire that he stresses. Um, in a way, also um, looking at Napoleon for you know, looking at Napoleon as the responsible figure for this uh, return to worshiping, right? Starting with his own person. Um, as you know, you might know, Napoleon's uh, projects, architectural projects, such as, you know, the Church of the Magdalene in Paris, uh, are very interesting because you do see Napoleon kind of right above Jesus. Uh, so there's kind of a... a, a, a superimposition of narrative, uh, Napoleon's own narrative with Christianity. So in a way, Napoleon already paves the way for the return of Catholicism in uh, state affairs, right? Um, but romantics are kind of questioning everything. Um, they question reason, they question the supernatural, they, they're, they're, they're just not um, trusting anything, right? Uh, very disappointed. It's a little bit like the Baroque after the Renaissance. If you remember, the Renaissance is a time um, of, you know, discovery, of finding, you know, uh, human beauty, paving the way to the Enlightenment, um, already proposing 
some ideas uh, based on, or some theories based on reason, right? And then boom, we get into the Baroque, which is a completely uh, opposite uh, mentality, very dark, very obscure, very enigmatic. So again, we could you know compare the, the Romanticism to the Baroque uh, in a lot of different ways, right? In Musset, you have to uh, also identify the influence of uh, two other figures, Lord Byron, and Musset was, of course, uh, very influenced by the English ideas, but also Goethe in uh, the, um, the German Romanticism, right? Uh, the German Romanticism is very famous for this universal doubt that it proposes, right? Nothing is for sure, right? And that's where um, um, Octave, the the main character of Musset's Confession, said, "Tout ce qui était n'est plus, tout ce qui sera n'est pas encore. Everything that was is no longer, and everything that will be is not yet." Right. So it's a, it goes along with this metaphor of the uh, demolished house, right? Uh, the society, the person, uh, the country is a demolished house that is not yet uh, rebuilt, right? So this this idea that I'm rebuilding my house, but it's raining and I'm not making any progress. So in the meantime, I'm not living in the old version. I'm not living in the new version, right? That is the metaphor that characterized the maladie du siècle, right? The illness of the century. And of course, a very, uh, very negative, um, very negative vision of the future in Musée, right? Kind of the end of the world is near, uh, which we see throughout the entire 19th century and part of the you know, beginning of the 20th century, right? Okay, so these were two um, introductory uh, video, and then right after this one, you will have one by Dr. Godon talking about the Spanish um, tradition today. And uh, the idea is that you watch all of this uh, all of these videos before we start our discussion through Skype. All right, I look forward to seeing you guys in a little bit. Thanks.